I just had to turn it over. over. Used to do that. You make Jerry <laughs> stuck me in the round thing. My nose is about that far from the top. The rest of me was touching. <laughs> Are we ready? It is. Wow. Will the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee come to order, please, for the city of Jacksonville? This is January the 14th, 2016. I want to thank everybody for appearing here tonight. All the people that are watching on channel 10. We are now going to go to item number two, the adoption of the agenda. Do we have any discussion, any additions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. I move. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. <laughs> okay, <now. laughs> Third item, approval of the minutes from the December 10th, 2015 meeting. Any corrections? Any other discussion on it? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion we accept. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of adoption <coughs> of adopting the minutes from December 10th, 2015, signify by raising your right hand, except for Tom. He wants to raise his left hand. <laughs> okay, motion carried. CIP discussion. Well, good evening. <laughs> yep, I'm up. Um, well, last month we came before um, the board and we talked about previously identified or uh, previously approved CIP or capital improvement projects. Um, and so tonight we're going to talk about the new projects that we've identified for water and sewer. So just like last month, um, we've also provided a handout that's also on the screen. And just to kind of refresh everyone's memory, what you see before you are the larger sewer basins. Um, and represented in different colors. We've got a legend on the right-hand side, and um, you can see that we've got Western, Gum Branch, Piney Green. We've got some of the major streets to kind of acclimate everyone to where the projects are located. And so that being said, we're um, and also in, with your handout in your agenda packets, we put together the proposed projects that have a lot more detail. Um, and we'll be going through those page by page this evening. So the first project that we're going to talk about is the inflow and infiltration project. This is found on page five of your handout. It's not represented on the map before you because at this time we haven't identified the areas that we're going to be looking at. 
this project is actually a continuation of the projects that we um, have been currently undertaking with we design one year and we construct the next year. <coughs> this project actually doesn't begin until um, FY21 with construction in 22. So this is just a continuation of the ongoing project for inflow and infiltration. Um, and as, as you might, might recall that this, the project budget for, I think it's beginning in years 19 on are the same budget numbers. So we've got 70,000 for design and 630,000 for construction repairs. Or in this case, case it would probably be point repairs and cured in place lining. So going to the next project is the Decatur lift station elimination project. This is number one on the colorful map. <coughs> it's in the Brookview Basin, which is on the left side, the darker green. And it's also page six on the CIP handout. So looking at the map, the Decatur lift station um, is in the Brookview Basin. And currently the request is to evaluate the possibility of abandoning the station. Currently the station, um, unlike all stations, we spend a considerable amount of operation and maintenance, electrical costs, and staffing to maintain the station. In addition, this station has approximately a 15-minute response time <coughs> once the high alarm level goes off for someone to respond. Um, and before there's a sewer spill, we haven't had any spills, thankfully, but we also have a bypass pump that is dedicated to this station. So the request has been to evaluate the possibility of abandoning the station and by abandoning the station we would be installing roughly 1700 linear feet of 15 inch sanitary sewer that would follow um, the currently wooded area um, as you see and eventually would discharge to Brookview um, pump station. Now if through the evaluation process that this is not possible, then we would have to make some repairs to the station to, to give us a, a hold a longer, like a larger wet well, so we have a, um, a greater response time rather than the 15 minutes that we currently have. So again, this is, um, at this moment, it's been identified as a need. It's currently slated in the fiscal year 18 with <coughs> construction to start in 19. Is that near... Decatur and Sioux Drive, is that where that's near? Do you know? The uh, Decatur and Bosco, but it's right there near the middle the elementary school, primary school. M middle school, yeah. Yes. Okay. Not not near the tower, but No, it's, no. it's closer to the water tank. I mean the water tank. Yes. It is close to the water it tank. It is close to the water tank, yes sir. Oh, okay. It's down a different street there, right? Yeah, it is down a different street, uh -huh. but it's so you it's come really up in eyesight. Right. Yes. Oh okay. Pete, may I ask sir? your question? How long? She said 15 minutes. Yes, sir. After. How close is, do you have anybody that's farther away that you couldn't get there, like towards the rich lands or something, wouldn't be able to get here in 15 minutes? Because uh, all, of, all of our personnel that are on call for the lift stations are required to be within the 30 minutes response time. <clears throat> uh, the issue is no matter who we call, by the time we get the alarm, we tell, they all drive their truck home so they can respond from their house. There is one, one employee who lives probably less than five minutes away. However, they're on a rotation of every fourth week they go on call. And if they need help, they can call one of the other mechanics to come and help them. But uh, the, the issue is with the response time is there's, the creek is three feet from the manhole that overflows. So that's the reason we don't have a, we don't have a response <clears throat> time. It's just it's a very small wet well, and the creek is within three feet of the hatch. Good thing. The, no, the next project is um, Ellis Outfall G1. It's number two on the overall map. It's going to be found in the Ellis Basin, which is the lighter green area. And it's also page seven of the CIP handout. So this project was actually identified in the 2006 Wastewater Collection System Master Plan, and then we updated it in 2011. And this project was identified for future growth. <coughs> However, it was placed on hold when we started doing the engineering for the Parkwood Regional Western Trunk Sewer Project. We weren't quite sure at the time how much demand that project would take off the system. 
So with, the, with that engineering piece being done, coupled with us updating our sewer modeling effort, this area was, has been brought back before us as an area of concern. And lines maintenance has gone out there to try to um, verify if the model is correct. And they have um, verified that, yes, it is. This, this needs to be upsized. And so this project would consist of replacing approximately 3,600 linear feet of 18-inch gravity sewer with 24-inch instead. And this would allow us, um, obviously, greater capacity um, and to prevent any overflows. I have a quick question. Uh, you said Ellis Outfall G1 was number two on our map location. Mm -hmm. It's three. Yeah, okay. It's three. Okay. okay. The next one. <coughs> there. The ne yeah. The gotcha. next one is the opposite one. Thank you. So yes, this problem. is number three. I'll change it on my little place. Yep. <laughs> I kept looking for the creek. I know. It's <laughs> just keeping you guys on your toes. <laughs> well, I know that area. It's not the right area. <laughs> Yeah, it was um it was trying to pick these areas out from the master plan so um but yeah this would be an evaluation of this area again so that's why it's being brought back for us to for consideration so currently this would be design in 18 with construction in 19. and then the next one is ellis outfall two and this is actually number two on the overall larger colorful map and this is at ellis pump station mm -hmm. And again, it's the same scenario. It was previously identified, and um, the need is still there for us to upsize these lines. Um, so we would replace approximately 350 linear feet of 21-inch gravity with 24-inch and about 400 linear feet of 15-inch with an 18-inch. So this actually would follow the other project. So this would be design in 19 and construction in 20. This is one of the areas that along the oh, along <laughs> this bottom green line that you see up there, um, we actually went through probably in 2006 or seven and raised all of the manholes with precast sections, strapped them together, and then bolted down the lids to build capacity in that system to prevent overflows. I think you did that to the one right there on <coughs> Bell Fork. We have done it in several places yeah, where we've had sort of problems. Across. So that and and that is a indicate. I mean, we did that back in two thousand and seven. That is an indication that is a line that does need to be upsized. With all those lines running through the trees and all that, do you have a problem with the roots? You know, raising the lines and whatnot. We have root, but we even have root penetration problems sometimes. Yeah. Like that, roots actually grow into the system. Which means if roots get in, water can yeah. get in and out. Exactly. Primarily in, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> or fortunately, I guess. I guess the question was, how much of a problem do you really see with that? I mean, a lot, a little? Those lines are big enough that we don't really see a root intrusion problem there. It, there is roots there, but it doesn't <coughs> create blockages. Um, we have more issues with the creek itself swirling and eroding around the pipe than we do the actual root intrusion. One thing I would point out in your handout, the description is um, incorrect. That was a typo on our part because if you'll notice that G1 and G2 have the same, uh, same description. So um, we are still working on the draft CIP. We have not presented that to council as of yet, but that was um, a change that we found after we we printed out the, the handout for you. So the next project that we're going to talk about is Henderson Drive Infrastructure. And this is page four on the overall map. It's in the middle of the salmon color, and it's page nine of the handout. DOT intends to resurface Henderson Drive from North Marine Town, I'm sorry, North Marine Boulevard to just near the Jacksonville High School pedestrian crossing. And every time they're, they're getting ready to resurface their road, they always ask the city to evaluate and repair any deteriorated infrastructure, um, therefore eliminating the need for any 
um, us to cut that newly paved asphalt in the next couple of years. So with this project, the city will be evaluating approximately 700, 7,400 linear feet of sanitary sewer, 9,600 linear feet of water line, 29 manholes, and 95 dra driveway aprons. So this is a very large project. And as such, uh, we will plan on beginning some of the camera work on that evaluation this year, and it will continue next year. As part of this project, the city needs to um, comply with the American with Disabilities Act. And so we've got to evaluate the 95 dra driveway aprons. So as you can see in the detail that we've provided with the arrows, right now on Henderson, the sidewalk is installed back of curb. And what we plan on doing for the majority of these is hopefully to be able to put what we're calling wings on the side. And I don't think I can draw, but basically where the arrows that's what we'll be, we'll be creating on the driveways to allow, because currently the driveway actually comes to a big dip, and so someone um, who's in a wheelchair will have very, you know, almost impossible or difficulty actually traveling, traveling down the sidewalk. So with this project, we'll be going in and, and adding those wings on. The curbing actually rolls into the driveway. Yeah. So when the curbing was, when the driveways were originally laid, the curbing actually turns into the driveways, which it looks very nice, <clears throat> but when you lay a sidewalk right up to it, yeah. it, you know, near the street, it may be a four inch drop off to the driveway and at the back of the sidewalk, it may be an inch or two inches. So it, it really creates a problem. Of course, you can't go in and just grind all that off. So it's, it's <clears throat> a challenge and this hopefully will be a, a solution we can use. Although anybody familiar with traveling Henderson Drive also knows that um, there's a few areas where there's a retaining wall immediately behind the sidewall. Mm -hmm. So there, there's still going to be some challenges that we have to work with DOT to address. What is DOT actually plan on doing the, their work? I think they were looking at um, letting the project in 17, I believe, so. but that gives... When they let a project, there's obviously time built in there for the contractor. That doesn't mean they would actually start right at in the beginning of 17. So, so I guess my question is, when is our final time limit? It's tight. It's It's very tight for as much as, you know. Which is it, you know, why we're trying to get started this year with a, at least the preliminary work to evaluate. And hopefully we won't have to touch nearly as much as what we've identified. But the budget is assuming that we're lining you know a majority of it and a few point repairs so hopefully we'll be able to bring down the budget once we have a better about better idea of the the status of the infrastructure and hopefully we won't have to replace more than we expect to because yeah. that would be worse much very much so i have a question on the, the apron wings is, is that that all within the right-of-way footage or is there concern about some of it might be no, there, I'm sure there would be concern about the width of the right of way through there. Okay. That that could be a challenge. Because then you have to make arrangements with the property owners. That's correct. Yes. If, if there's not sufficient right of way, then we would have to make arrangements. And it's like that on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. That's part of the challenge. Now, will this be happening in all areas from now on? <coughs> go around redoing stuff if there are driveways that were there were not compliant? Um, thank goodness that's the worst one that I know of. But yes, any anytime we go in and we identify problems with the sidewalk, we try to address them. Um, now, if it's a large area like this, it would be either a part of a overall larger project or we'll do it on a kind of an as needed basis. For example, um, in New River, we had a few that were not ADA accessible, and we had um, some members that lived in that community that um, traveled by a motorized wheelchair, and we helped identify some of the routes so that we could strategically, because we didn't have, you know, several hundred thousand dollars to come through and fix the entire area, so we strategically identified routes and had them help us. Um, and we've luckily been able through transit funds to be able um, to improve some of those. Okay. So it, we try to repair what we can and, and what we don't, we, we try to get in larger projects. So yes, we do try to address it.
Thank you. The next project is Woodlands Park Utility Extension, and that's page, or, I'm sorry, number five on the overall map, which is in the Brookview Basin, the darker green area. And it's also page 10 of the CIP handout. This uh, Woodlands Park is by Parkwood Elementary. Um, it's also the home with um, JAZA, which is the Jacksonville Area Soccer Association. Currently, they have a lease with the city of Jacksonville, and they maintain their current restroom slash concession stand and a shelter, which are the two um, structures that you see closer to the parking lot off of Morgan Lane. And as part of the current lease agreement, JAZA maintains the actual soccer fields themselves, mowing, irrigation, etc. And the city of Jacksonville maintains um, the perimeter to include the parking lot, landscaping, and the playground area. As part of the current lease agreement, JAZA is, um, needs, or is required to make some improvements, and one of those improvements is a restroom or slash meeting area. And so they've identified in a general location where you see the circle in red. And so that way it would allow them if they wanted, they would have restrooms on both sides of the field. And this project would allow the city to extend water and sewer from where we're assuming is the closest area off of that cul-de-sac. <coughs> so this project, um, once we had a financial commitment from JAZA that the project would go forward, the city would then design and construct just the infrastructure. Anything associated with the building of the actual building, facility charges, building fees, permits, etc., all that would be the responsibility of JAZA. So this project is currently is um, slated for design and construction in, 2000, in fiscal year 18. The next project is the, yeah. <laughs> the next project is the water line at Cheney Creek and that's number six on the overall map. It's kind of um, it's in the main pump station basin which is kind of the mustard yellow kind of in the middle of the map. And it's also page 11 on the CIP handout. And this project consists of replacing a 12 inch water line that crosses Cheney Creek along Marine Boulevard. And in the map that you see, it's currently where we've got the X's. Um, this pro the, the water main itself is sitting on pilings. <coughs> Staff has come out and did some short term repairs but we really need to have that long-term fix, which is to replace the water line through directional drill. Um, so this project is slated for design and construction in 17. And this isn't a new project. This is actually one that's been in the CIP for a number of years. So we've had it in as an active project and we've kind of put it on the back burner as a pending project. But in reality, the project needs to get done. The need is there, so we're, we've added it back in. I have a question. During that same time, the, the old pipe there that's broken, would all that be removed? Yes. Okay. For those of you who might be wondering, on the other side of the bridge, <laughs> I was waiting for someone to ask. Because <laughs> I did. Um, the other side, we also have a 12-inch um, water line, but that water line is actually connected to the bridge and is doing very well. Um, and so at this time, we're actually not going to replace that one. The one that we are replacing is not connected to the bridge and, again, is supported on pilings. So the, actually, the one we're replacing should be easier to do the directional drill than the other side. The, other, the, the creek kind of opens up on that side, and trying to get your directional drill staging is going to be much more difficult on that side than it is on the side we're actually focused on. Well, if attaching to the bridge is working, why wouldn't you do it on the other? Yeah. DOT, so do, DOT well, doesn't allow us to do that anymore. Okay. And actually, if they replace that bridge, they'll make us remove that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At which point would you then decide to directly drill it to? Or mm -hmm. We would probably be faced with that, yes. Because we would want to leave dual water mains for redundancy and um, providing, because most of the businesses on this side are served off of that 12 inch. So you wouldn't want to leave one single point of failure across the creek. Yeah. 
Next is the Black Creek Raw Water Wells. And this is actually not on the overall map because we haven't determined yet where these wells might be installed, but it is page 12 on the CIP handout. This project is a, as a result of the continuing work with the Onsel Water Resources Group, and it involves the installation of three raw water withdrawal wells into the Cretaceous or Black Creek Aquifer along with the, tr the transmission means necessary to transmit the water from the wells to the water distribution system. This project is proposed for better spacing in the Black Creek raw water withdrawal well field <laughs> while also maintaining the currently permitted Black Creek aquifer withdrawal rate in the event that the temporary Central Coast Plain Capacity Area Permit, quite a mouthful, is issued that allows the city to forego the third reduction in the groundwater withdrawals from the aquifer. Um, right now, the final reduction for that is scheduled in 2018. So we are planning on doing planning and design in 17 and then construction in 18. Did you want to elaborate on this? Sure, to simplify that a little yes, bit. Yes, please. All of our Black Creek <laughs> wells are very close together. <clears throat> and in talking with the state and working with the um, GMA, who's our consultant, stands for Groundwater Management Associates, which is headed by Dr. Sproul. So anybody familiar with groundwater in this area knows Dr. Sproul. He's pretty much the um, resident genius, I guess you can say, <laughs> regarding groundwater. But basically, in talking with the state, it looks like if we can prove certain things, we won't have to take the next reduction. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we may be able to gain back some of the capacity we've already lost, but we may have to make additional concessions, such as spreading our well filled out. So we're not pulling from, you know, imagine we're pulling from, you know, a, and I'm just making a number up, but a three mile radius. If we spread that out to where we are now pulling from a five mile radius, you can imagine that the impact is less. So we're spreading that impact out. So there is some talk about actually eliminating some of our existing wells and building new wells, you know, further out and, you know, spread out further so that we can actually rotate those. So really the idea is we need a project to be able to fund wells in case we need to, to gain capacity back, eliminate some of our current wells and move them out. Is Black Creek, I Six to 800 mind. feet okay. below below ground. Where is it, Castle Haynes? 200, okay. roughly. All right, I thought it was deeper. You have any idea where these wells will be? We do not. Okay, the no idea, wake up, Jim. Th this project would actually be um, done uh, in conjunction with the Water Resources Group, which includes Omwasa because they also have Black Creek wells roughly in the same vicinity we do <clears throat> so it would be done as a coordination a coordinated effort between the entities and that's another question will some of the other people other cities towns and all that's pulling out of there also be allowed to possibly pull some water it, it not it, have to do like what we're not you know <clears throat> a reduction yes we all we all face the same criteria um so but you have to Basically, you have to prove that you can meet the four criteria that the state have, has laid out. And basically, what they've done is a, a fairly good job of saying, if these four things are met, then we're not depleting the aquifer. That's basically what it says. So if, you're proving, if you can prove that you can meet those four things, then you're prove, you've proved that you're not over-withdrawing and drawing the aquifer down, which is what was the concern. You know, the concern was it wasn't recharging as fast as we're depleting it. Of course, the um, concern and comes if continued development and you've got more people, that's, 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 that's more true. being pulled out. Which, and it, it basically says that, you know, you have to be able to sustain it. It's not just a one-time thing. And, and actually, the criteria that are in place, you have to prove it for more than a 12-month period. Mm -hmm. So before we can ask for the reduction, or, or to stay off the next reduction, we have to have 12 months, of, 12 months of continuous data that say we meet this criteria. Moving along, 
we've got uh, the replacement of well houses. This also is not on your map because they're outside of the city limits, but it is page 13 on the CIP handout. These were the original well houses and they were built in 1962. Um, and as such, the buildings are in need of repair and we need to update electrical, plumbing, HVAC, telemetry, et cetera. And so this actually would be focused on three of our wells, wells well houses two, three, and four. And um, our concept right now is to demolish the buildings and to replace it with um, free, uh, prefabricated buildings. Um, right now, it's, this project is scheduled for design in 18 and construction in 19. Whereabouts are they located? These are out off of 258. Okay. Up there on the, the left. Yeah, by uh, Eastern Equine. Mm -hmm. Wells Road, Pines Farm, yeah. Pines Town. Yeah. They're concrete block buildings with um, wood roofs. And I would do. Yes. Yes. yes, exactly. <laughs> and who knows what they're painted with. True. Where are these located at? Out off 258 on the right-hand side <laughs> here at Quine Country. Now you're going to continue to use the wells. That is correct. Building. Yeah. That's correct. It just replaced the, the house and the electrical equipment itself. Yeah, I have coffee at these meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Yeah. <laughs> is there any concern about asbestos or other materials? Oh, yeah. In there? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. We will have yeah. to have them evaluated. Yeah. Well, and, and what we do typically when we demolish a structure, we hire a company to come in and they do evaluation of asbestos and lead. And then based on that result, as part of the demolition project, they have to abate it. And then we can demolish the building. I figured that is probably a foregone conclusion since it was 62. I was yes. just wondering about the asbestos yeah. part. <laughs> and similar to that project is uh, the Indian Drive Brewster Station. That's number seven on the overall map, um, kind of in the salmon color area. Page 14 on the, C the CIP handout. And this, this station was constructed at the same time the initial well houses were constructed. This is the station actually conveys water from the high pressure side to the low pressure side, and it's the only point at which the water flows between the two pressure zones. So it's a vital component of the city's distribution system, and as such, we need to um, go in and evaluate the building itself. So um, part of this project was the, we'll be looking at installing two variable frequency drives, electrical upgrades, HVAC generator, and associated site work. The building itself appears to be in good condition, so we'll have the building evaluated. We might have to do some changes to the roof system, because currently when you, in order to, main, to do maintenance on the VFD, you can't just pull it out. It's too long and the roof's too short. And so when we take it out, you have to take it out in pieces. So when we come back with the new VFDs, we might have to adjust the roof height and depending on what type of the size of the VFDs that we put back. So, um, but this project will um, design in 17 and construction will um, also begin later on that year, hopefully, and then continue the following year. This booster station is how we fill the common stank from the low pressure side. <clears throat> The next project is the water tank isolation valve. This is page eight on the overall map. And there's actually, it's, there's two number eights because we're gonna be doing um, isolation valve at Northwoods and at Ellis water tanks. And that's the, in the green area. Page 15 on the CIP handout. Now, both of these tanks, are, they do have isolation valves, but the isolation valves that they currently have are within the road and so when we have to maintain, do any maintenance on the tank, we turn the valves off, it drains the tank, but it also leaves the surrounding area without water. And so realizing obviously this is a major concern, um, we are wanting to put in an isolation valve just for the tank. So this, that's what this project would do. That way when we wanted to service the tank for repair, the surrounding area and the fire <coughs> service still has water. Um, so currently, both design and construction is scheduled in 17. Just out of curiosity, when you train a tank and refill it, how long does it take you to 
drain the tank and refill it. It depends on which one it is. Like if, if it's the downtown tank, they refill it several times a day mm -hmm. because of demand. Um, if it was, uh, and it, it depends on where it is in our system. I think the last one we did was Bryn Mawr and we got it down to where it was less than a quarter full and we couldn't get water out of it. So we had to unfortunately waste that water. Um, but it, you know, it just, with it that empty and pressure in the system, it didn't have enough pressure to overcome the system to empty the rest of it out. The commons on the other hand, you know, if it would have no, no problem overriding the pressure because of the height. So, and actually at one point when we had a, um, I guess this was, this has been four or five years ago, we had a, um, large water main break right beside Western Boulevard where, um, the restaurant brood awakenings is, brood awakenings is now um, mm -hmm. right in that area and I, we only had water in the standpipe inside i mean it was it was we had trouble getting it stopped so it, it, it depends on which you know <laughs> it depends on which of the tanks you're talking about mm -hmm. So that's kind of an, um, an overview of all the projects that the water and sewer projects that are proposed for the next five years and the current CIP that we're working on. Um, and so our plan currently right now is um, next month to come back before the water sewer advisory committee and review all the changes that we've made to date. Um, and as you, you've discussed, we've already made some more um, on the ones we just talked about this evening and hopefully present to you the final complete draft. Um, after that, we'll probably, or probably in February, we'll be distributing it to council as well for their first review. And um, then the final CIP will be adopted by council with the, the annual budget. There's one more on the back. Cretaceous monitoring one? We don't need to talk about that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was theirs. I thought it was. What I wanted to ask you was, is this the city's part? Or is it going to be divided between Anwasa and the city? We we have um, we don't have any we don't have an interlocal agreement in place yet, but we have verbal commitment that um, they would participate in the cost because they receive the benefit the same benefit we do. Yeah. Um, this is part of the project I talked about being able to have sufficient data for over a year period to prove that you are that you can meet the criteria, this is what gives us the data. You have to have monitoring wells in the Black Creek Aquifer. Um, and, and we have been working with um, Onwasa as well as the county because the, the monitoring well locations that the state helped us identify is actually in Burton Park. And the county was gracious enough to um, set out a place for us to put the monitoring wells in and um, Omwasa worked with them on that. So we actually have um, the location already. Um, it, so it's a matter of uh, getting the bid documents prepared and getting the funding. So this, and this may move up depending on timeline um, and getting the project bid out so that we can get it under construction. And we have to have all of our data in by August of 2018. So there is a deadline that is driving this. And you need a year's worth of data. And we need a year's worth of data. Which means you need it in by? <laughs> August of 17. <laughs> <laughs> it's tight. Yes. So, it, and if, you know, it, it, this is programmed for construction. We, we have design already underway. The um, Water Resources Group actually got together and funded that. Um, the city being a portion of that and also funding the other portion of that. And the, um, so design is already underway. Um, actually, bid documents have been submitted to the city for review. Mr. Michal has those um, to look at. And uh, they will also go to the state for review. And as soon as we get that portion done, get everything compiled and put together, we'll evaluate where we are and we either put it out for bid and go to city council with a budget amendment and a CIP amendment for 2016, because technically that would be before July of 16. Or if it looks like we would not be held up, then we would just wait for the CIP to come in in July. 
So um, when you know whereabouts in Burton Park you're looking at putting them in, I'd be interested in seeing that. It's already laid out. It's already laid out. Yes, and I'd actually the state. Yes, and the state has already um, come and looked at the site and verified that that's a good location. And, and basically, the way that we determine the location is the city and Owasso's Black Creek Wells are kind of out 258, you know, equine country and, and further toward Richlands. So what they, and then the saltwater interface, which is the um, groundwater portion of the aquifer that is salty mm -hmm. is somewhere toward the ocean. So the idea was to strategically place monitoring wells between where we think the saltwater interface is and where our wells are and show that we don't have saltwater encroachment. That's really one of the driving ideas behind the monitoring wells. During droughts, the river does have salt there. Let's hope it doesn't make it 800 feet down. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a, Pete would actually like to see a portion of a drought right now <laughs> for LTS. <laughs> but yes, chloride levels change drastically in the river, which is um, we don't use it also. Which is the reason that when we looked at alternative sources to Black Creek, we were forced to other wells because surface was not a good option surface water treatment was not a good option because of the varying conditions conditions of the river yeah. anybody you. have any other questions of dina good job <coughs> you, got a, you got a way lucky <laughs> i would like to say one other thing um with the um february meeting we are planning to have a representative from uh, finance here also to talk about we should have a pretty good understanding of what the the project impacts could be on the budget and where we stand with the budget so we plan on having somebody here in from finance um, to give you a short presentation answering questions you may have and tell you whether there would be or could be an impact on rates because I know that's always a question from this group is this just for they have something pretty. Hey, well, I was going to talk about that in okay. our old business. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anybody have any old business? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so the the holiday at the uh, at the last meeting, you actually asked the size of the Holiday City Sewer Basin. So that's really what the map that you have in front of you is. The red shaded area is gives you the um, Holiday City Basin. So you can see it's the Holiday City Mobile Home Park is a large portion of that basin, but it does have some outside flow to it. It's in your package here. And I actually thought it went further up toward Pinewood, but Deanna confirmed that that's where it stops. That's just as a follow-up from our conversation from last meeting. And then also included in your packets um, was your um, WASAC report. If you want to call it that we had um, if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer that we didn't have anything major last month so that's um, that's very good we did have one small um, sewer spill as a result of a grease blockage but it was non reportable and it was cleaned up um, but we and then um, attached to your report you should have had two maps that Deanna prepared for you. Um, it shows you one of the questions you had in the current INI project, the one that we've just put out and we're getting ready to start. Do you know what the start date is? Um, no, actually, we're it's out for bid now, oh, and we've got a pre-bid meeting next week, and I think bids come back um, the second week in February. So, so that then time. probably April by the time we get started. Yeah. But this gives you the locations and the repairs that we're going to make. So these are all locations where people are going to be digging not necessarily digging it could be on, on the first map it is dig and replace and on the second map it's actually cured in place lining so they'll go in through a manhole okay. so it doesn't mean that they'll the, the second map there will be very little digging unless something bad happens
Is that all Wally you have right now? Yes, sir. Okay, any new business? Okay, I have very few. You, you should have in your packet the planning and permitting update. Had 244 permits that were approved by planning division. And the list, your four down there, your, it, <clears throat> the staff has received a request from Academy Sporting Goods. They want to construct a building behind Krispy Kreme on the western. Uh, Duke Energy is proposing a substation on Richlands Highway. Julia Henderson staff approved a site one plan for a 2,400 square foot retail building at the corner of Liberty Drive and Corbin Street. And Onslow House approved a final plot at McDaniel Drive, which is, uh, I guess it's still a rest home, isn't it, there at McDaniel? You know, I know it used to be, but they're, they're going to be doing some work there in the back. This month, the other night, we had a planning board meeting. <clears throat> They're doing away with a trailer park on Old Maplehurst Road, which is in the ETJ. And they're going to have to have a special use permit. They're going to build a church on that. There's a, if anybody cares to look at it, we've got a, a plan here. You're going to build a 6,000 <clears throat> square foot church right here. A little small building. The rest of this is parking lot there. And all this is going to be, this is where trailer park and everything's at. That's just going to be uh, part of parking and such as that. And it's a wooden, a wet area. That's where you And on Wassa's advisory board, advisory committee, when were they did not have a meeting this month due to the fact that uh, we're only meeting once every other month. So the next month will be uh, February when we'll have a meeting and we'll skip March and go to April and like that it's every two months now. And that's all I have on that. Anybody else have anything? Nobody does. We'll have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion? Everybody want to stay here for a while? <laughs> well, I, I, I think Wally had started clarifying where the location was that you were just mentioning. Oh, yeah. The, the church will be built where former Utopia Mobile Home Park was. I have a question after we adjourn. I'd like to ask you. No, it's not very going to be open. No. <laughs> this is, uh, might be a personal question. <laughs> Yeah, make a motion. We adjourn. Any motion? I'll you second. make a motion. I'll second, second the motion. We have a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs>